making stuff happen in a small town. Um, so I live in Aberystwyth and I organise quite a range of different events and different things with the many hats that I've got. Um, and what I wanted to talk about today more than anything was the sort of barriers and roadblocks that you might have in terms of organising things in a small town, whilst trying to be a bit more strategic about those to hopefully inspire you and um, to give you a little bit of a energetic um, ideas behind things and getting things running in your own place as well, your own communities. So some of the things that I've done over the years with my different hats, I used to work in a hotel many years ago, I organised a wedding fair, um, I help with the Christmas light switch on here as part of a community group. I've also organised a conference, there's quite a lot of different things, so it's not sort of going down the same kind of niche. However, when I was thinking about these um, different sort of roadblocks and the barriers and hurdles that we have to overcome, it became quite obvious that they're sort of very similar um, in terms of the common threads that, that attach them. So I sort of decided that in, for this talk, I would talk about three areas in terms of that. So I've got practical roadblocks or barriers, then I've got human ones to overcome, and then also mental ones as well. So in terms of organizing events, what I would say is um, passion and energy you definitely absolutely need to go from that very small idea right at the start to actually holding that event and having people come, enjoying it, and then sitting down at the end and being, yes, that was fantastic and it was worth it. And despite all of the stress and the tears and the overwhelm, which inevitably comes with every event that you do, it was worth it and I will do it again next year. So let's talk about the practical sort of over um, barriers and blocks that we need to overcome. I won't dwell too much on these because they are very much practical and there's not really that much we can do other than persevere and be flexible. They would be my top tips for these things. So practical things would be um, finding your venue or perhaps your location, making sure you've got the right permissions, whether that's from um, the venue owners, the county council, your town council or community council, you know, making sure we've got all of these things in place so we can actually hold our event. Um, for example, if you're holding a Christmas event like we're doing this year, one of the things you might want to make sure is you've got the right permissions to close the road, um, which is something we learned this year, despite having run this event for many, many years, is that we've never properly asked the Trunk Road Agency um, for those permissions. So you're always learning, even 15 years in on this event, there's always something to learn. And then the other thing, of course, is sort of red tape and funding. So this is why I'm sort of talking about being a bit flexible and persevering. One of the things that will always come up in terms of, um, you know, if you're in a Facebook group or you're chatting away to someone else who wants to organize an event, these practical things are going to be the first thing that will just put people off straight away. So when I say about being flexible and persevering with it, really do chat away to people, tweak your event if you need to, you know, persevere with actually trying to get through to the right people to host the event or to get the right permissions or to get the funding as well. There is always things like funding out there. It's just a case of finding it. So really being a bit stubborn about it and trying to get, get hold of that. So like I said, I don't really want to talk too much about the practical elements because these are things that once you've ticked those boxes, we can get on with organizing the events and getting people to your events and things, which brings me on to the human side of organizing events. Now, I mentioned right at the start, there's always tears, there's always a lot of stress and there's always overwhelm. And I've never organized an event by myself. So I'm going to say that straight away. I've always had other people to be working with. Um, especially if I'm with a community board, you know, there's quite a lot of us there. We're all equal. We're all helping each other out. The aim is to hold this event for the community. Um, but there is still all of those stresses and tears and fears and overwhelm and everything. So the first thing that I would say is absolutely always make sure you've got help. So get those humans in, get those volunteers in to help you. Get people in who see what the vision is. They um, want exactly the same thing and they want that same feeling at the end of that event as well, that, you know, they've really provided something of value to the community. So get some volunteers in to help you. Never be afraid to ask for help either. This is something that I've learned over the years. Um, as someone in school, I was always told that I would never put my hand up to ask for help. And I hate asking for help. But it's something that I've learned that I really have to do when it comes to organizing events in a small town. So get in your volunteers, get in those people who've got the same um, sort of mission behind what they're trying to do as well. 
The other thing that I would say is collaborate. So whether that is between businesses or between community groups, it's just really important to get as many different people involved as possible so they feel part of that process and that they're then willing to either pitch in with an idea or pitch in with a contact, some help perhaps, you know, extra hours on the day and that sort of thing. So the more people that we make feel part of an event, the better hopefully it will go, whether that's just in terms of running smoothly or being a bigger and better event as well. So the final thing in terms of the human element of organizing an event is, of course, getting people to actually attend your event as well. So one of the things obviously would be making sure you've got your marketing, but again, linking back to that collaboration, networking, getting out information about your event to all of the different people, organizations, communities within your area, you know, really telling everyone about the event and making sure that people come. So we organized an event um, a couple of years ago. It was a one-off summer fair here in Aberystwyth to raise money for the Nationalized Edward. And we went to town on the marketing. It, we were everywhere. We even went as far as painting old-fashioned summer fair signs that we posted all around town, directing people to it. And we still had people complaining at the end that they didn't know the event was on. So you will always get that. You'll always get people who aren't happy, no matter how much work and effort you put in. Um, but what was more important for us as a team was we knew we'd done our absolute best in trying to gather as many attendees as possible, getting in as many businesses involved, stallholders, you know, businesses from all over Mid Wales and further afield so that we could basically grow our attendee list by proxy, you know, by people hearing about the event. So they're the sort of elements in terms of the human side of organizing and making stuff happen in a small town. So just to recap on that, we want to make sure that we collaborate as much as possible. We want to make sure that we've got volunteers and we're asking for help as well. And then we also want to get those attendees through the door, because if you're holding an event that's annual or more frequent, they will be coming back, hopefully, if the event goes well next time. So we've looked at the practical, we've looked at the human and my final sort of thing when I was planning this talk, when I was thinking, you know, what are the different elements is the mental side of it as well. So I've already touched on sort of being quite overwhelmed with things and um, getting stressed, you know, but there are always at the end of an event, it goes well. So you get those really nice feelings and it's worth it. And you go through the whole process again the year after. But in terms of my advice as someone who's done this before and um, as someone that runs a business as well, what I would always say is worry about you've got two things, you and other people. We can't really do much about the other people. So we can worry about you and how we can um, basically look after your own energy and your confidence in terms of the event. So this is links through to what I said earlier about sort of having that passion and that drive for the event from the start. That will help you maintain the energy throughout the organization process because you're so certain of your idea that by the end, you'll be really happy that it's gone as you hoped and people came and people enjoyed the event. So confidence along the way then. I know a lot of, there's a lot of talks out there about imposter syndrome and things like that. And we all get a bit of a sort of shakeup of confidence as we're going along with these events. Someone might come up with a bit of a hurdle or a roadblock and you just think, gosh, why am I doing this? Is this, is this really the right thing? You know, have I come up with the right kind of event? Um, am I planning it right or not? But if you've got that team of humans around you, going back to you know, the second point that I made, then we've got people we can bounce off, we can chat to, we can come up with solutions, and then hopefully give us a little bit of confidence back in our idea as well. Um, and don't be afraid to go outside of your little team and ask other people what they think, or even, um, and we've done this, we've gone to other towns and said, you know, look, we're trying to host a similar sort of thing. What are your experiences? So don't be afraid to do that, just to help with your confidence along the way. And then your energy, of course, is to keep that energy up. Um, but I've got the Christmas event tomorrow um, as it goes, and I am tired. I'm fed up of talking about Christmas. I can't wait to get it over and done with. But I know tomorrow when I get there, I will be so excited because I will see people arriving. They'll be buying things off the stalls. They'll be happy to see that Santa has made his way all the way from Lapland to see us. Um, the Lantern Parade, you know, it's a big event for us. But it does take a lot of energy to keep that up throughout the whole time. But it is so worth it. So I just always keep in mind how happy people will be on the day. Um, and my final thing in terms of wanting to speak about the sort of mental side of organizing events in a small town is something I learned quite recently, actually, off a friend when I was, I was getting a bit overwhelmed with organizing um, an event. 
And I was chatting with her and she said, no one else knows what you've got for this event. So if something doesn't happen, they don't know that they're missing out on that. They're just really happy that this event is happening in the first place. So it was kind of taking a step back as well and being like, you know, actually people appreciate what's happening, whether or not you've done the 100% or you've just delivered the 90%. And that was something that I really listened to a few weeks ago and thought, no, that's, that's exactly right. And it completely shifted my mindset then because I came back to my desk and I sat down and I thought, okay, I know where I'm going now. And off I carried on. Um, so yes, in terms of organizing things in a small town, it can be hard. Um, I think sometimes it's harder because you see so much on social media and in the newspapers about things that aren't happening and are happening and not going as it should have, or, you know, why didn't they do this and that? But at the end of the day, you get so much pleasure from delivering events to the community. So many people come to that event and enjoy it. They won't go online and complain because they're too busy enjoying it and telling their friends and their family about it as well. Um, so I would absolutely, if you're thinking about organizing events, then definitely go out there and just do it. Come up with an idea, figure out who you need to speak to in terms of that event, um, in terms of sort of making things happen. Is it the town council? Is there a little community forum? Um, you know, perhaps there's already an events group or someone who organizes events frequently and get them involved and ask them questions and, and get on with it, get, get plowed through with your idea. Um, so Yes, to wrap up, um, making things happen in a small town, I would say concentrate most on the practical, the human and the mental, plan that out a little bit and then go ahead with your events. Good luck.